everyone welcome to the geekman so my name is geekman and thank you for subscribing if you do decide you love this video and you found it very helpful of course the sub menu is going to be right down below also anything that i show you in this show in case you're interested and you want to buy it there's going to be a link right down below using amazon it's going to be the same price as amazon and i get affiliate commission this video is not sponsored by anything that i actually show you I buy everything with my own money and the reason that I get this is because I use it myself. With that said, let's proceed with the video. We're going to be reviewing two different cameras over here. One is the Sony, the Sony CyberShot and I was actually somebody who got the first versions of CyberShot and I loved it and I used to use it until I moved to Canon. So this one is the Sony 100 LX 100 M6 the latest version and the so-called best version of this camera. It's not really the best, but it is the latest version, worth $1,200. Versus this camera, which is the Canon G7X Mark II, the third version. I can't wait, and it's not even out yet. I hope Sony doesn't make the classic mistake. Actually, Canon makes the big mistake of coming up with this same exact camera over here, but is competing against the Sony. Well, as you can see, it is live recording. I don't edit my stuff and I post it up on YouTube. It is what it is. Now, let's continue with the show. Up ahead, over there, what is recording me is the Canon M camera. Canon M3. It is an excellent camera that I like. It is my backup camera. Most of my vlogs are recorded with the Canon G7X Mark II. My favorite and trusted camera. Now, the next video that you're going to be see after it is going to be actually recorded when I'm going to be comparing side by side the G7X Canon versus the Mark, not the Mark, the PowerShot uh, uh, Sony RX100. Now, when I'm going to be recording them, I'm going to be using the Canon G9X. So the Canon G9X Mark II, also Mark II. Why do I have so many cameras? I'm a photographer. I do videos and I teach people how to make money online. That's why I have so many different videos. I make this and I make a living doing exactly that. So I constantly need the best and the latest cameras for my job. So that's why I buy them. Now, of course, getting the latest and the best version of the camera is something that I have been always waiting for, the super zoom camera. So this specific one offers just that, the possibility for you to super zoom and I was hoping this would be the perfect vlog camera as well. So I can do selfies, I can film myself and so on. Unfortunately, this has a few downsides to it. One of my favorite features that Canon actually has and it is easy access and easy for you to do is this feature right here. I don't know if you can see this but we're going to be zooming in right there. So this specific feature right here is this right there well you can set the plus and minus and with the plus and minus set the low light possibilities are almost endless well you go about and you have a very low light and you don't have to have a very low light lens because you can just set the screen to look as amazing as it is right now and you don't need a low light lens for that and you can easily do this with your hand this is something that canon G7X Mark II excels at and Sony doesn't have this feature. So what you have to do to get this feature in, you have to go through the menu, you have to find and you have to set it up. This is time consuming. I want to flip something, I want to turn it on and I want to start recording. I don't want to waste any time. Time is precious. I live in New York. Everything takes time. And of course, with time comes money as well. You can't make money without sacrificing some time to it. And you want to get into this world where you're going to be making money using the least possible time as possible, such as sleeping when you're making money. That's why I teach online classes. I don't do anything. I'm a lazy person. Just kidding. <laughs> anyway, with that said, we have two different cameras to compare this to. Look almost the same, almost identical. Both of them are pocket size. Now, before we go into the comparison, there is some feature I love and I want to show you. This is something that is a must-have for any of those cameras. It is a mini tripod. Right now I'm using a backup tripod to do the same exact thing. 
So I have two different tripods that I use. This one I use 99% of the time. Why do I use this one? Because this is the ultimate selfie camera. So when you're uh, having it on, you can not only you can cycle it any way you want. This is actually cycling it. You can also press on this button right here and it collapses. And you can go and you can put it any way you want, which is kind of cool. And then you let go and it is very strong inside and it has three legs. It is simple to use. It doesn't need to be any more sophisticated than this. But this is an essential tool for you. So this is what I like to use. And for both of those cameras, this is a feature you should actually get. And now let's get into the show. So here it is, a side-by-side -side comparison of the Sony CyberShot and this one is the RX100 version 6, actually called the RX100M6 versus the PowerShot G7X Mark III. No, 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 just kidding. This is the Mark II right here. So we are having the contenders right here in line. And which one should you be getting would be the first question. So before we go into comparing both of them side by side, size by size and comparison, you definitely have to have the charger comparison as well. So the Sony and the Canon, the big difference is the chargers. This one is a volt charger. There is no way around it for the Canon. There is nothing that you can really plug in and there is no USB plug for it. So this is a plus and a minus for the Canon. I personally like the old fashioned style because you can just use it in any kind of outlet. The Sony on the other hand has two different kind of chargers. It has this charger where you can take it out, put this in any USB portal and charge your camera and you will on the go. And it has the old fashioned charger that you can plug this in as well. The only downside is the following, is that you have to go about and put this inside the camera to charge it up. So that's a big no-no for me and I don't really like this small cable that could be prone to breaking eventually if you use it lots of times. And what I mean is not the cable itself which is the biggest problem. The biggest problem is actually the connector inside the camera which eventually will go bad, over time that is. Now both of the cameras are almost the same identical exact size. So there is no problem with that. Also, Sony has this special bag that you can go and fit this right in. And this is made for the G cameras, for the Sony's that is. Actually, the M cameras. So the Sony's are the M cameras, the Canon is the G cameras. Put this in and it's ready for you to use and go. And you can even put the Canon there as well. But it says Sony right here. Funny, I was using the Sony bag to store my Canon for the longest time. Nobody said anything about that. So now, Let's compare the flashes. So for this one, the flash is convenient at the top. Press on here and it pops out. For the Canon, it is right on the side on the bottom. And it comes out. Here is how it looks like. Actually, the Sony one is a little bit smaller than the Canon one. In fact, for something that costs $1,200, this doesn't look very good. This could be easily be broken. This one is a little bit stronger for the G7X Mark II. Now, you can easily put them back in by pressing on it. Same thing here as well. And of course, there is a big difference in price. $1,200, this is probably going right now around 500 bucks. So you can buy a bunch of those for the same price as you can buy this one. The big question is, is this a competitor to this one? The answer is no. This is a low-light camera. This is a zoom camera. 
the previous version of Sony was actually a low light camera as well, which is an actually a direct competitor of the G7X Mark II. So this specific version they created and it's not really meant to compete side to side with this one, but a lot of people who are vlogging might think it is. In some ways it is because it has the same exact screen here. Look how good and how much it can fold. Now, if we go to this one, guess what? It can't go all the way down. So this is not good right here. So if you needed this to go more down, you can't. You're going to break it. What Sony did is enable you to have a lot more freedom here. So when it comes out, you can put it all the way down there and take a picture of things you could never take before with the Canon. So that's a plus for this one. Big, big plus. It has this grip right here. Zero grip right there. Why Sony? Why? You have to actually buy and pay extra to have another grip here. This is super flimsy and very easy for you to drop because there is no grip anywhere else in this camera except here. When you're holding it, you are feeling it that it is very easy for you to accidentally drop this. Sony on the other hand, oops, I mean the Canon on the other hand, the grip is a little better here. I like the big grip right here and right there. So this makes it an ultimate work camera. Easy to grip easy to take pictures. Here's the feature I love the most about this. You see when you are moving this you can hear the sound clicking. If you don't want it to click you just press on this button and it doesn't click anymore. And you can do any kind of assigned feature to this specific wheel. If you don't want it to have any feature whatsoever or you just want to zoom in and out or you just want to go ahead and use it to autofocus, you can do that as well. Or manual focus, that is, you can't do it for autofocus. Lots of good things that you can do with this. And I really like the flexibility and ability to use this for all your needs. On the other hand, Sony, it only has the version that makes no sound. Which could be a good thing, but I do like the possibility of having the click thing to it as well. Especially when you're manually focusing on it, you want to hear that you're actually moving this and how much you're moving it in. When it's off, not only you can't hear it, you also have a lot more movement to this. So when you're doing this, it's actually restricting your movement a little bit and it makes it more precise as well. Which, Sony, you're lacking this. Why wouldn't you put this feature in here? It is such a small and simple thing for you to do. So, other things here as well. Let's zoom in to figure out the wheels and everything else here. Now, Sony is more about just taking the picture and getting the job done. Canon is a lot more about getting a lot more features in here that you want to get it done. Now, they both have recess buttons in here and Canon has a button that sticks out a little bit here, you can see it right there, for taking pictures. Sony doesn't really do this. So you can accidentally press on the on and off button instead of taking a picture. Why Sony would you do this? You have to have the shutter button a little bit higher. So you can differentiate between the two, exactly like Canon actually did this. So that's one thing I don't like about this already. Different scenes, and you can see, you can totally automate it, you can do a lot of different automation scenes, and a lot of controlling scenes as well. This is primarily a photography tool, the Canon. Sony is primarily a movie tool, like a camcorder. A lot more features here geared toward the camcorder section, there is no movie scene like here, like over here you just go to the movies and that's it. This is all for the movies. Everything else is for photography. On the other hand, there's a lot more things here that is mixed between photography and movies. It is more mixed here and it is more confusing as well. There's only one wheel here for you to play with. So that's a good or a bad thing. When you turn this on, 
you also have this super complicated menu system that only Sony is famous for and when you're going through this look how many different stats and everything else is in here and yet most of those things it's very hard for you to go and use now for this version they actually made it touch screen so you can touch the screen and get some things done unfortunately the only touch screen that we have the only feature that we are getting here is the following and it is when you want to take pictures and that's it there was no other feature here at all so when you want to take a picture and you post something in here you press on this to focus and it's not always on depending on the mode that you have you can actually use this let's put this in and here we go I just activate it you just press on different areas and it focuses on the item it's not very good at what it does and it doesn't always focus the way it should be focusing and it can't focus on something very close by unless you put it right next to it zoom out and it has to be a very good low light so it's not a very good low light camera and it fails at macro photography big time and the Canon, same deal, also has a touch screen, very responsive touch screen by the way. And over here when you use the touch screen, you can use it for many different purposes. The one I like to use it more is you can do autofocus, you can also take a picture, you can set it in the setting right here and take a snapshot when you just press on it. Actually it's a very annoying feature that I don't recommend for you to use. But there is something very cool about this. So let's go and take a picture here. So let's say you take a bunch of pictures. You press on review and you can press on this and you can switch and flip between different pictures, of course, of myself and so on. But here we go. We can flip and see everything and every single picture that I took just by pressing on this. There is a lot of automation here. You can press on the item itself and you can go in and zoom in into the item as well. Look at this. Sony, why wouldn't you do something like this? This is the simplest and the easiest thing for you to do and you haven't done this. The great thing about this in Canon is that you can zoom in so much that you can see every single pixel and you can see how much good details that you took of the product and if the picture itself is great or not. Sony on the other hand fails at this. The whole thing that you are touching the screen you don't get anything else but focus that's it there's no other features here this camera fails big time when it comes to that another thing that this camera does have and this one actually lacks is the viewfinder so people who are viewfinders well guess what we have it right here you can view anything you want and you can see it right there plus there is this sunglasses or eyeglasses thing right here it's actually for eyeglasses for your vision and everything else in here so you can actually go and see through this and you don't have to view through this this is something that canon actually lacks and you have to upgrade to a different version of the cam canon camera to be able to have this feature and this camera doesn't have it both of those cameras lack the ability to capture sound so whatever sound comes in internally that's all you're getting so you might have to use a different kind of camera to capture sound but this thing is kind of cool by the way but is this worth the additional 600 bucks just to get this feature and no it's not most of the time you can use this to take pictures and to do everything else you really don't need to view through this miniature small viewfinder in fact if you need to adjust your eyes to see through this you might not be able to see anything whatsoever look how small this screen is and you're not going to be able to see too many details in something as small as this you think this is not large enough this is even more small so this is for you to keep in mind also the battery life totally gets drained very fast especially if you're using it for what it is made of movie mode all the movies here are awesome and amazing unfortunately this battery is eating up all your memory and your computer memory as well when you're using it for filming so what's my verdict on this camera is it really worth one thousand two hundred dollars you're only getting 2.8 to 4.5 you're getting a super zoom camera which is good for whatever you're going to be using it for but 
you are not going to be able to take the pictures that you want because this versus this well guess what this can do 1.8 to 2.8 and this goes when it super zooms in to 200 millimeter which this cannot well guess what this has even optical zoom built in and it has digital zoom as well so maybe it can zoom very close to this but it is not real zoom it is digital zoom and yet well the cost itself is very prohibitive you're paying so much more money for getting a super zoom camera the smallest possible super zoom camera in your hand that gives you the best possible images quality except for getting a dslr on you at the price of paying $1,200 and not getting not getting the 1.8 that I really wish this camera actually has overall it is overpriced toy but yet it solves its purpose and yet you still need two different cameras to take with you on a trip to be able to take the pictures that you actually want because you want a low light camera and you want a super zoom camera so you're still carrying an extra piece of gear that you really don't need for whatever trip that you have which comes down to it which kind of trip do you want to do are you going to be doing a lot of movies are you going to be going on places where you need a lot of zoom if this is the case this is the right camera for you yet the price is too expensive if something does happen in your trip for the same price but for the same price but you know guess what you can buy not only one of those not only one of those you can buy like three different versions of used versions of the g7x mark ii and you can get the worst possible version of this on ebay probably for 250 bucks right now which is pretty much beat up but you can still use it on your next vacation why not just get one of those and super zoom in with this or just get a brand new one you're still getting a very good deal by the way on amazon and you can get amazing beautiful images and i do suggest for you to get a brand new one and here is why if you already are spending money to get a g7x mark ii might as well get the best possible version that you can but i would suggest don't get the usa version get the gray market version it's going to be much cheaper and it is still the same and as good as the regular usa version and you're going to be using it for a very long time so consider this as a very good camera for you to use can do almost everything that sony can except it doesn't have the super zoom to this yet it's going to give you amazing beautiful pictures and it is a great camera for taking amazing beautiful macro pictures and using it for low light and vlogging this camera is just a zoom camera but it's not a camera this is just a camcorder that looks like a camera keep this in mind before you're buying this camera which one do you need an expensive camcorder or do you need a cheap very good photography camera pick the one you want and decide for yourself which one you'll be getting and let me know in the comments right down below so my rating for this for a camcorder is well this is a 10 out of 10 as a camera this is only a 5 out of 10 this one for a camera this one is almost a perfect 10 actually i would put it at the, the 9 range nobody gets a perfect 10 for me then as a video camera this is like a free it's not really a good video camera but still i use it for vlogging when it comes to vlogging this is 10 times better than this camera because it is low light because it is 24 millimeter and because it is three times cheaper almost than this specific camera so let me know in the comments below which one you'll be getting what do you think of this video and which one you think is worth it for you